So when we talk about static pressure, I think this is our fifth class or uh, sixth class something, right? Okay, sixth class. So see, uh, when you talk about total pressure, then this total pressure is the sum of static plus dynamic pressure. So actually, this dynamic pressure is because of velocity and it has direct formula half rho v square. But when you talk about static pressure, then static pressure you should understand in this way. Imagine you have a chamber here. And in this chamber, you are keeping some gas, any gas you are keeping. So suppose uh, this gas, whatever you are keeping uh, in this, you have some 5000 molecules. 5000 molecules. For example, if inside you are keeping ammonia gas, so NH3. So you have five ti 500, uh, 5000 times NH3, 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 and like this, 5000 times. So inside you have 5000 times NH3 and NH3 is in gaseous state. So actually gases are free to move anywhere. So what will happen? All these molecules will go and hit. They, they all will go and hit the wall. Okay. Now see, I will relate this example with a cup of tea. Suppose I have a cup and in this cup I am keeping some tea. So in this cup of tea and in this closed chamber, one thing is common that here also you have fluid and here also you have fluid. Actually, when I talk, uh, when I say fluid, then fluid means either you say liquid or you say gas. They both are known as fluid. So, in this closed system, your fluid is, is striking to the wall. Because every time, definitely someone will be hitting the wall, every time. You try to imagine, if we have 5000 molecules, so one thing is very clear, like all the 5000 will not hit the wall at a time, but continuously, uh, some a molecule will be hitting the wall definitely but how will you know this that continuously there is a hit is there any proof yes proof is there if you make any hole then through the hole they will come out so why are they coming out because they have tendency to hit that portion of the wall if you make hole here then from the hole they will go out why are they going out because they have tendency to go and hit the wall but they are not finding the wall so they are coming out so suppose if you have any closed chamber in this closed chamber if you are making any hole and inside you have uh, kept some some molecules so from this whole molecules will come out why molecules will come out in, they are not some kind of person like you are calling them and saying hey this is the gate come out no it is the tendency of the free molecules they hit everywhere on the on the closed surface so that's why on in the closed cylinder that's why when you make hole they comes out you can make hole anywhere and you can test this so this is the proof that okay there is bombardment of molecule on the wall at every moment so now I will just give you little bit mathematics because that is important to discuss static pressure. Actually see in physics our pressure is nothing but force by area. So the force which is experienced by the wall, so I am erasing this, actually in this closed system, in this closed chamber, uh, so I am targeting only one molecule. So this molecule will go and hit the wall. So this molecule is very very small so this will apply very small force on the uh, wall so that force i will say as df you might you might be knowing that uh, df dx dy dz e, the, these are the symbols to represent small quantities so df will be the smallest force because i am targeting only one molecule so this one molecule will hit the wall so wall will experience df amount of force now next question now next which area we are targeting so see if this is the molecule then in this molecule if molecule is going and hitting the wall then only this much area only this much area will be in contact with the molecule so you can see area is very very small so that area will also say da but here you have to mention one point this da is very very small as compared to the entire area of the chamber so limit limit da tends to zero this will be your mathematical condition so finally you got your pressure which pressure your final formula is coming like da sorry a small pressure dp is equal to df divided by da but you must mention here that your da is tends to zero so this total quantity is having a physical sense what is the physical sense applied force is very small area on which molecule is striking that is very uh, also very small 
that's why I'm writing tends to zero. Means close to zero. So df by dA will give you very small pressure. So this pressure, what I am writing in mathematical format, this I am developing by the very basic formula of physics. But there is one other physical field. This dP is the pressure experienced by only this portion of the wall. So this portion is experiencing this pressure only because of this molecule. Means if you will sum, if you will add all the chamber pressure. which is because of other molecules because molecules are bombarding everywhere so if you'll add all the static pressures then you'll finding out total static pressure in the chamber i hope now uh, the concept of static pressure is clear static pressure is actually because of the bombardment of molecule are you getting now okay now let's understand how this static pressure is working whenever we have flow and now in cup of tea in this example these tea they are there uh, hitting the wall but question is why are we naming this as static pressure why are we not naming this as dynamic pressure molecules are in motion but still i am saying it is static pressure why because your total t is in rest same thing happen in t also molecules will hit the wall but the total t is in rest your t is not flowing so with this concept same thing you imagine there is a pipe in this pipe uh at this end and at this end you have imaginary free end free end you have and now i'm keeping gases here now i'm keeping gases here and i'm saying whatever pressure is at this end suppose i'm saying p is equal to 10 bar same pressure here p is equal to 10 bar so at both the ends pressure is same because pressure is same so these molecules will neither flow in this direction nor in this direction because to make a flow possible you must have pressure difference at both the ends it means if this pressure i will increase to 12 bar then this is 12 bar and this is 10 bar so here we have pressure difference so now the motion will be happening towards low pressure always keep in mind there are three popular examples uh suppose you have a plate here suppose you have some some water here and this water you are keeping in any plate so if you tilt the plate like this then water will flow in this direction so where water is flowing water is flowing towards less height here you have more height here you have less height in same way flow happens towards less pressure okay one more example which is actually unnecessary but is it important now if you have wire in the wire all the electrons are there whenever electrons will move you will be getting current in the wire this is the basic fundamental so at this end if you supply 10 voltage at this uh, you supply 10 voltage then electrons will not go anywhere but if you are providing some extra voltage here suppose 12 voltage then electrons will go towards more voltage here but current will flow towards less voltage so what i am trying to connect water is flowing towards less height current is flowing towards less voltage so fluid will flow towards less pressure so actually i was trying to say whenever fluid is flowing in the pipe how both the pressures are acting whenever fluid is flowing in the pipe how both the pressures are coming here so idea is you see when this flu when when this 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 object when this guy is flowing in this direction then if you want to check static pressure is here or not static pressure is here or not static pressure is here or not here or not here or not you do just one thing you make a small hole here and if the water is leaking outside it means definitely molecules were trying to hit the wall also at the same time going in front direction also so it means this this is a proof that okay molecule if you make hole here if no one is coming outside it means there is no static no static pressure but if someone is coming outside it means they are trying to hit the chamber that's why they are coming out because we are making hole is it clear now okay that's why whenever flow happens then at this section or at any random section here here anywhere so for simplicity consider at this section you will be having flow passing through this section hey, this is imaginary section reality you, you don't have any gate or something just imagine one section so at this section if you cut the pipe cut the pipe so cut the pipe like this like this so exactly at this at this surface 
those molecules are bombarding so at this surface whatever static pressure is coming that will be the static pressure and from this flow is happening so from this with how much velocity flow is happening so at that section that will be dynamic pressure it means what at this section you have both the pressures static also and plus dynamic also so this static pressure and dynamic pressure when you will be adding you will be getting total pressure at this section so from here we get very strong logic if you increase the number of uh, molecules in this direction to flow it means number of molecules who are bombarding they will be less because molecules are only constant so if more molecules will flow in this direction this less molecules will go and strike the wall so that's all if dynamic pressure increases static pressure decreases simple dynamic pressure is because of half rho formula and static pressure is because of bombardment actually static pressure formula we have but that we study in thermodynamics that is out of your course so when i will teach thermodynamics if important then we will discuss this so when you add total you will be getting total pressure i hope it's clear right so uh, uh, say, like you are able to understand it properly uh, what is static and dynamic okay very good so now you see our today's topic is going to be center of pressure what is center of pressure see there is something called center of pressure but what is this so to understand this consider this is an air foil and it is cambered air foil why it is cambered air foil because cord line is this and camber line is this so you have camber here in the air foil that's why it is cambered air foil now see when the flow will go over the cambered air foil like this then we know that static pressure and dynamic pressure will not be same at every point because see whenever molecules are passing over the air foil they will be having certain velocity so because of that velocity they will be having dynamic pressure so because of dynamic pressure you will be having some static pressure that will be less because you imagine if you make any hole here then molecules will enter in, into the air foil okay it means that is a proof okay static pressure is there so point is at every section you have static pressure okay now you know that at every section you have static pressure so everywhere everywhere on the air foil you will be having static pressure now we have some situation situation is upper upper curvature of the air foil you can see like this and the bottom is like this so actually whenever you have air foil and when air flows over the air foil then stream lines will look like this and after certain height the stream lines will be undisturbed so suppose till here your stream line is disturbed after this stream line is not disturbed so from here to here if you will check then it is making kind of convergent shape now what is convergent shape in convergent shape your flow will accelerate it means your velocity will increase so whatever velocity is here that velocity will increase here that velocity will increase here so because of the increment in the velocity dynamic pressure will increase because of that static pressure will decrease okay now this is static pressure because at every section you have different different velocity so at every section you will be having dynamic pressure and at every section you will be having static pressure means at every section you will be having static pressure here 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 everywhere but opposite thing happening at the bottom surface at the lower surface what is happening your stream line will look like this so imagine that this is the last stream line which is undisturbed so now if you check the shape then at the bottom your shape is divergent what is divergent your area is increasing that kind of shape is divergent and here i have explained your area is decreasing so that is convergent whenever your area will increase that time you will say okay it is divergent shape so 
actually divergent shape is having a property flow will decrease here or you can say flow will deaccelerate here or you can say flow will retardate here so when velocity will decrease your dynamic pressure will decrease because of that your static pressure will increase so overall now you can check here here your static pressure is decreasing where at the bottom surface but at the top surface it was decreasing it means what at the top whenever pressure decreases we experience vacuum whenever pressure increases we experience more pressure positive extra pressure so see at the top you have at different different point you have different different pressure so so those different different pressures we draw with the help of arrow J mathematical distribution i am talking just now we understood that this is the air foil so at this point you will be having different pressure at this point different pressure at this point different pressure at this point different pressure so those pressures are actually <coughs> less so how much less that i will represent by arrow this kind of arrow i will show so now this arrow i will pack in one envelope like this so this envelope i will say as pressure distribution pressure distribution exactly at the bottom what will happen at the bottom static pressure will increase so i will show inward arrows inward so according to uh, different different places my arrows uh, length will be different different so i will draw one envelope here so this envelope again is pressure distribution so this pressure distribution and this dis pressure distribution they are not equal so at and uh, i mean at the top you will be having one resultant point where all the pressure will be passing i can consider this as the resultant point then at the bottom also you will be having resultant point so finally resultant of this and this that i mean the total overall resultant point will be a particular point which is because of the pressure distribution okay now here one extra thing you have to add what is it, that extra thing whenever flow happens two things will come automatically one is pressure distribution that i explained here one is shear stress now what is shear stress after understanding these two only you can understand what is the center of pressure so pressure distribution clear now shear stress actually what will happen if any uh, any fluid is passing in this direction any liquid uh, any moment uh, any molecule is passing in this direction so what will they do they will suppose this is the air foil surface and this is the air molecule passing like this so actually your surface is also made up of molecule na so they will be having attraction force because of that attraction force this molecule blue color will try to rub this black color molecule and try to take this in this direction because of attraction force it means this is this what we call as shear so this attraction force of the air molecules with the surface molecules they will act in this direction it means what right now in my diagram i have shown you only the pressure part i will also sh also uh, show you the uh, shear part how i will draw this kind of lines this kind of lines so there will be shear so now means you understood one thing that at any point you have two types of forces acting now i am talking forces one force is coming because of pressure distribution and one force is coming because of shear stress distribution how can i say forces suddenly because pressure is also force by area and shear stress is also shear force by area so pressure and shear stress both i can write in their force form so at every point at, at every point we can calculate forces at every point we can calculate forces so you know that when you have so many forces because we have so many points so at every point you have uh, these phenomena happening so at every point you will be having force 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 at every point so overall when you add all these forces then we call them as aerodynamic force aerodynamic force now what is your aerodynamic force your aerodynamic force is nothing but the resultant force on any object which is because of fluid flow whenever fluid is flowing 
two things will happen pressure distribution and shear stress distribution these two pressure and shear stress distribution we will convert into their forces now resultant of these forces we call as final force that is aerodynamic force this aerodynamic force this what you are seeing here this aerodynamic force we split further and we make we find lift and drag anyway that lift and drag is different uh, concept currently when we are finding out our final force and we are saying as aerodynamic force then definitely this force will be having any location because whenever force act it acts at a location so the location of aerodynamic force where this aerodynamic force is acting that is only we call as center of pressure means you have air foil so at this point you will be having uh, pressure distribution also and shear force also because of that i'll be getting final force so at every section i'll be getting force 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 everywhere force 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 so all these force if i will take as a resultant then that final force will act somewhere suppose this is my final force name of the final force resultant force is aerodynamic force so that location where this force will act that location i will say as center of pressure now this center of pressure you should be very very clear at the center of pressure aerodynamic force will act and one more point about center of pressure to understand that point about center of pressure whenever actually center of pressure is not a constant point it will keep on varying it will keep on varying why it will keep on varying there is something called angle of attack when you will change angle of attack then this pressure distribution over the air foil and shear stress distribution over the air foil will change so at every section amount of forces will change so because of that resultant will act somewhere else so cp location will change is it clear very good so that location where aerodynamic force will act that you will say as center of pressure so two things are very very important to know about center of pressure first thing at the center of pressure aerodynamic force acts second there is no moment at center of pressure no moment at center of pressure why there is no moment at center of pressure because to have moment you should have a force and you should have a perpendicular distance but if this is the center of pressure and your force is acting here then this force you can multiply with this distance and you can find out moment but because your force is acting exactly on the center of pressure then you are losing the distance so no distance so no moment so what is the definition of center of pressure center of pressure is the point keep in mind it is a center it is a point at which aerodynamic force is acting and it is having zero moment no moment if you are saying only one line that only aerodynamic force is acting then it is half definition complete definition is moment is also zero clear okay so this is about center of pressure now let's understand what is angle of attack angle of attack is very very easy thing so whenever we have air foil then in the air foil there is something called a leading edge there is something called a trailing edge but how will you know what is where is the leading edge here 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 where so for that uh, actually you should understand there is something called center of curvature sorry there is something called radius of curvature what is radius of curvature so for that you understand suppose i am drawing any random curve like this so actually from mathematics this term is coming so at this point if you you have curve right so this curve if you extend it will convert into circle you have this curve so this curve if you convert it will convert into circle you have this curve this curve will convert into circle even this curve you can convert into circle so you have all these circles right suppose you have this curve this curve will be bigger circle from here to here so every curvature you can convert into its imaginary circle now that circle will be having a particular radius okay so now my point is from here to here 
यू कैन ड्रॉ करवेचर फ्रॉम हेयर टू हेयर यू कैन ड्रॉ करवेचर फ्रॉम हेयर टू हेयर यू कैन ड्रॉ करवेचर फ्रॉम हेयर टू हेयर देर आर सेवरल पॉसिबिलिटीज टू ड्रॉ करवेचर सो यू ड्रॉ योर सेंटर ऑफ करवेचर वेयर यू हैव मिनिमम रेडियस एट द लीडिंग एज इन सेम वे एट द ट्रेलिंग एज ऑल्सो इफ द ट्रेलिंग एज शार्प लाइक दिस देन दिस विल बी द एंड पॉइंट बट इफ ट्रेलिंग एज इज सम वर्ट लाइक दिस नॉट एग्जैक्टली शार्प यू हैव सम कर्व सो देयर यू ड्रॉ द सर्कल सो यू ड्रॉ वन सर्कल हियर एंड यू ड्रॉ वन सर्कल हियर बोथ विल बी हैविंग सेंटर यू कनेक्ट सेंटर ऑफ दिस सर्कल टू द सेंटर ऑफ दिस सर्कल देन इट विल ड्रॉ लाइक दिस सो योर लाइन इज कटिंग हियर सो दिस बिकेम योर लीडिंग एज एंड दिस बिकेम योर ट्रेलिंग एज वेयर द लाइन्स आर कटिंग द एयर फॉल एंड दिस मिडल पोर्शन लाइन यू कॉल एज एंगल कॉर्ड लाइन ओके दैट इज नोन एज कॉर्ड लाइन सो हियर वॉट यूर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट ओके वी हैव कॉर्ड लाइन नाउ suppose you you got the air foil and in the air foil any cord line is there okay maybe this air foil this air foil may flow like this may fly like that so the free stream will come in this direction maybe this air foil will fly like this then your free stream will come in this direction maybe your air foil will fly like this then maybe your free stream will come like this so angle between cord line and free stream is known as angle of attack so where is your cord line this this black line i am saying is cord line and where is my free stream so in my first case this is my free stream right so angle between cord line and free stream i mean this angle this angle is your angle of attack so for simplicity we simply say that okay if you have air foil then it will be having cord line and this cord line will make certain angle with the free stream flow that angle only we call as angle of attack so very popular symbol alpha alpha we use for angle of attack or you simply say aoa alpha so if angle of attack will increase then because of that actually lift increases on the air foil why lift increases because lift formula is half rho v square s cl so in this lift cl comes into picture what is cl coefficient of lift so when whenever we have alpha it means whenever we have angle of attack then actually cl increases because we have cl versus alpha graph like this so if alpha will increase you can see for this alpha you have this cl for this alpha you have this cl for this alpha you have this cl so if you increase the alpha cl increases because of that lift increases that's why angle of attack is very very important point to discuss so this was the angle of attack clear okay now we have to understand what is wash in and what is wash out so see actually what happens if you talk about this entire aeroplane then you will be having somewhere root when you attach the wing and suppose i am attaching wing here i am attaching wing like this so wing is nothing but it is made up by lot of air foils lot of air foils so everywhere so where the wing is attached that portion we call as root and this portion we call as tip and wing is like a cantilever like one side it is fixed and one side it is free so actually everywhere your air foil will not experience same angle of attack maybe here you have angle of attack something else i mean maybe alpha is the angle of attack maybe angle of attack at the tip is more than angle of attack at the root or maybe angle of attack at the tip is less than angle of attack at the root so because of this what will change just now in previous page i explained alpha changes cl if you increase the alpha cl value will increase because of that your lift will increase it means it means if you compare this part like alpha at the tip is less means 
means what alpha at day root is more so this this root portion will produce more lift and when you will come outside your lift will keep on decreasing why because at the tip you have less alpha for example here your alpha is just imagine 5 degree here you imagine alpha is equal to 2 degree so here more alpha here less alpha so you will be having variation in lift that lift will be uh, you know decreasing so it means what from the root when you are coming out side outside then your lift is vanishing it means you are losing the lift so you can say wash out when you are coming outside then lift when you are coming outside then lift is being vanish i mean lift is decreasing so technical term we say as wash out and just this criteria so just opposite if at the tip you are providing more angle of attack it means suppose here you are providing 5 degree and at the root you are providing alpha is equal to 2 degree so because of that uh, at the tip you will be having more lift and here will be less lift so when you are going in towards the aeroplane going in then your lift is decreasing so when the lift is decreasing then when you uh, your lift is being vanished when you are going in so wash in so lift is uh, washing when you are going in wash in clear hmm yes it is happening because actually we have separate uh, lot of types of wings actually there is something called uh, rectangular wing there is something called elliptical wing there is something called tapered wing so we have several types of wing so to make our stall we we actually we bother about stall there is something called stall so we bother about stall and we bother about the flow should uh, be proper over the wing so to manage everything we give this kind of designs you actually note here you should note tip should not stall early tip should not stall early root can stall no problem now now again if you understand why uh, what is the meaning of stall then stall is another phenomena then first i will explain stall then you will understand the physical meaning that why tip should not stall early i have not stall uh, i have not explained stall yet that's why just keep in mind tip should not stall early root can stall early okay okay so this was about wash in and wash out now see actually with the with the word this wash w a s h w a s h we have total four words and mostly students are confused see the four words one is wash out one is wash in one is down wash one is up wash 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 is coming here that's why students are thinking okay if they think they okay if they know down wash it they feel like okay they know something no no actually they all are different down wash means it is a phenomena in which your angle of attack decreases but this down this down wash is your aerodynamic phenomena aerodynamic phenomena it means because of air because of position of air because of direction of air your angle of attack will decrease and upwash means your angle of attack will increase again this is aerodynamic phenomena because of air your angle of attack is increasing so that's why we say downwash upwash but again concept is same if alpha is decreasing then cl will decrease lift will decrease again here alpha is increasing cl will increase lift will increase but come to wash out in case of wash out in the wing your wing itself is twisted your wing itself is twisted are you getting because of the twisting only alpha is changing yeah so this is kind of a structural twist and a structural twist or geometrical twist but this is aerodynamic twist just meaning is alpha is changing because of the change of alpha only we have all these four names Uh, two times alpha is changing because of structural design given by the company manufacturing properties and sometimes alpha is changing because of the aerodynamic phenomena means because of the air flow so that's why we have downwash upwash very good 
so we got our uh, wash in wash out then we have to understand what is fineness ratio fineness ratio is actually important property because fineness ratio is almost in every branch of engineering suppose you have a cylinder here now in this cylinder uh, or suppose you have uh, any this kind of body so this is your longest length in this this is your longest length and this is your longest width but you can consider this is your longest width so fineness ratio is nothing but longest length divided by longest width this is a ratio so that's why we are dividing so fineness ratio is nothing but longest width by longest sorry longest length suppose this length is 10 and this width is 2 so 10 by 2 will come as 5 okay so this 5 we call as fineness ratio in case of commercial aircraft we try to keep fineness ratio 9 around 9 roughly okay so uh, when we talk about any random object Uh, so in that you understand where is the longest line and this actually nowadays we are purchasing uh, mobile phones very frequently so your mobile phones are having length also and width also so your shape may change like tablet if you are purchasing tablet or if you are purchasing laptop screen anything so uh, you have fineness ratio in that also how long it is and how width it is this is the meaning of fineness ratio now uh, yeah it is actually applicable to estimate the drag why because see suppose uh, this is the aircraft so i am drawing 3d this is the 3d now if you see the aircraft from this direction then then you can see you can see the maximum uh, here and then you see ju just uh, if i draw the front diagram front view so i will see a fuse large and then i will see a wing and then i will see the tail so uh, see from lateral side so you can see the total length so suppose this total length is around 60 meter just an example and when uh, you see from the front then you will say total width of the aircraft like from here to here so here also aircraft is width here also width here also width but the maximum width so actually this will give you the idea of profile drag now i can teach you what is profile drag and in that what are the things are coming so see basic drags if you want to discuss in this we discuss only two types of drag one is parasite that you can say as profile and one is induced so induced drag is only one type that is because of lift so we say lift induced drag already i have taken this class in previous now parasite and profile drag if you bother then this parasite and profile drag is actually because of what so in this this drag comes because of pressure difference that you can say as form drag f o r m then it is coming because of shear stress because of shear stress and it is also coming because of interference so all these three together we call as parasite drag let's understand what is this actually see when you talk about parasite uh, sorry pressure difference what does it mean imagine you have any sphere this sphere is trying to flow in this direction so your streamline will be like this so here you will be having a smooth stream lines but here you will be having uh, this kind of curls why because actually when flow goes like this it creates vacuum in this zone so to fill that vacuum air turns like this so totally in this direction because of vacuum we get less pressure but here we get more pressure so 
यू नो दैट थिंग्स फ्लो फ्रॉम हाई प्रेशर टू लो प्रेशर सो एक्चुअली दिस रेड कलर ऑब्जेक्ट विल फ्लो विल बी हैविंग टेंडेंसी विल एक्सपीरियंस अ फोर्स इन दिस डायरेक्शन वाई बिकॉज हियर इट इज हैविंग मोर प्रेशर एंड बैक साइड इट इज हैविंग लेस प्रेशर सो दिस इज कमिंग बिकॉज ऑफ प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट वी कॉल एज फॉर्म ट्रैक सो दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट विल एक्सपीरियंस मोर फॉर्म ट्रैक बट इफ यू हैव यू विल मेक लाइक फिश लाइक दिस काइंड ऑफ शेप सो इन द बैक साइड ऑफ द फिश यू डोंट हैव चांस टू हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ वेक रीजन सो दैट्स वाई हियर एंड हियर यू डोंट हैव मच प्रेशर डिफरेंस बट वॉट अबाउट द सेकेंड वन शियर स्ट्रेस वॉट इज शियर स्ट्रेस शियर स्ट्रेस मीन्स इफ यू हैव मोर सर्फेस देन यू हैव मोर मॉलिक्यूल्स आर इन टच वॉट आई मीन टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ स्फियर एंड टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एयर फॉइल सो वेन फ्लो गोज हियर then here you have vague reason why vague reason because float this blue color flow does not reach here in this zone so if 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 molecule will not reach here then there will be vacuum so to fill that vacuum other flows will try to go in this direction so that's why we have vague region there but so that's what i explained about as a pressure di distribution but see when flow passes over the body it touches the body so that's why you have shear acting on the body shear effect so you can see that shear in case of air foil the surface is more so your shear stress will be more so here you got uh, the example that in this case you have less form drag but you have more shear stress more shear drag just here in case of a sphere you have extra i mean uh, form drag is extra i mean pressure drag is extra but shear stress is less shear drag is less so because of shear now what about interference interference is very very easy i will explain that see suppose you have a uh, fuselage then actually flow is also passing over the fuselage uh you have wings so flow is passing also over the wings so for fuselage it will be having its own shear Uh, shear stress because of that drag it will be having its own form drag because of pressure distribution uh, distrib uh, difference in case of wing also you will be having its own shear stress its own form drag form drag then you will be having tail also you will be having landing gears also you will be having this cockpit thing also knows everything so because of everything uh, they are separate separate but when you will connect them suppose this uh, these two bodies you are connecting here so they will go and connect like this so you will be getting complete wing so because of this connection you get extra drag here because their flow will not not be smooth when the flow will go there earlier that was pure fuselage so whatever flow was passing that will pass but if you will connect air foil uh, sorry wing there then for example you will be having some rough surface or something that kind of phenomena will happen there because of that one extra type of drag will appear so shear drag form drag and the last one is interference drag clear okay any doubt in this ha ha yes yes shear they both are same they both are same actually in case of shear force i will explain uh, only one difference uh, when when you talk about shear force that time what happens you will be having a surface uh, here you will be applying a physical force really you will be applying a force here but in case of uh, right now what i am talking shear drag that time what is happening actually you will be having air foil surface air foil surface is made up of molecules over that some flow will be happening so these molecules black color they will attract these red color molecules in this direction so it is similar to this but because it is happening on the skin and this is also happening on the skin that's why you can relate both here we are applying 10 newton force really but here we are not applying the force but we are getting the same effect because molecules are applying the force attraction force clear very good 
so finest ratio clear and uh, then we have to understand wing shape so actually wing shape is nothing it is about uh, um, any shape which is used in aircraft that is aerodynamic shape just 2 minute will be enough on this i will explain what is this see uh this wing should be of aerodynamic shape so that this flow should pass easily what is aerodynamic aerodynamic shape aerodynamic shape see there is something called efficiency and we are not talking engine here we are talking aerodynamics so this there is something called aerodynamic efficiency what is aerodynamic efficiency see whenever any object will flow to in uh, in any any kind of fluid it can be water it can be air so that object will experience several types of drags at the same time object may generate lift so how much drag you are having to generate this lift can we reduce the can you make drag zero no no we can never make drag zero drag will always be there so we always have to go for compromise so lift will be there and drag will be there for sure in case of our wing why are we making wing we are making wing so that it can develop it can generate the lift but at the same time it will also develop the drag so lift and drag ratio we should know it's like suppose we are generating uh, lift we are, sorry we are making our uh, aircraft and that aircraft wing is uh, producing lot of drag and it is producing very less wing so that's why efficiency is coming into picture that is known as aerodynamic efficiency so this lift divided by the drag this lift by drag ratio we call as aerodynamic efficiency and it should be very very good for wing shape why it should be good for wing shape because wing shape is already in aerodynamic shape that's why whenever you see aircraft everything is almost aerodynamic your fuselage is also aerodynamic shape your tail and everything is also aerodynamic shape your wing is also aerodynamic shape so that we can reduce our amount of drag and we can increase the amount of lift okay so this is about the wing shape main thing is wing should be aerodynamic shape if your shape is not aerodynamic then we call that as bluff body b l u w f bluff body then we go for aspect ratio aspect ratio is very very easy don't be confused with the fineness ratio okay now what is aspect ratio aspect ratio we are specifically defining for uh, uh, any shape which is having properly decided length and width properly decided length and width so see if you have aircraft then in this aircraft you will be having wing so uh see you have wing both sides actually this wing is developing lift both the sides so from this tip to this tip you have a complete length this length we call as span now this here you have cord and just imagine everywhere cord is same this is also cord is same cord is same everywhere cord is same so you have cord length so span length we give symbol as b cord length we give symbol as c so aspect ratio is nothing but b by c now sometimes what happens this c value what we are seeing here will not be same for every airfoil like sometimes airfoil can be twisted some kind like this like the c value may change for every airfoil so that time what do we do we go for average c that which that time there is a method to calculate mean aerodynamic cord when every airfoil will be having different different cord that time we go for mean aerodynamic cord using a method that mean aerodynamic cord we substitute in this formula that time your aspect ratio will be b by c bar c bar is the symbol for mean aerodynamic cord and 
एस्पेक्ट रेशियो कैन बी ऑल्सो रिटर्न इन टर्म्स ऑफ बी स्क्वायर बाई एस हाउ सी इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई सी बार हियर ऑल्सो एंड सी बार सी बार सॉरी बी बार एट द टॉप ऑल्सो एंड बी बार एट द बॉटम ऑल्सो देन दिस बी बार सॉरी नॉट बार बी इज जस्ट बी एम डूंग मिस्टेक बी एंड बी ओनली बी एंड बी सो बी एंड बी वेन यू मल्टीप्लाई इट विल बी स्क्वायर बट वेन यू मल्टीप्लाई बी इन टू सी इट मीन्स इट इज रेक्टेंगल दिस लेंथ इज बी एंड दिस लेंथ कंसिडर सी बार सो बी इन टू सी विल गिव यू दिस प्लान फॉर्म एरिया सो एस इज नथिंग बट प्लान फॉर्म एरिया सो एस्पेक्ट रेशियो इज नथिंग बट एस्पेक्ट रेशियो इज नथिंग बट स्पैन बाई कॉर्ड लेंथ स्पैन लेंथ बाई कॉर्ड लेंथ इट इज अ रेशियो बिकॉज नेम इज एस्पेक्ट रेशियो यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट एज बी स्क्वायर बाई एस सो स्पैन स्क्वायर बाई प्लान फॉर्म एरिया दिस इज प्लान फॉर्म एरिया दैट्स ऑल so you see here uh, center of pressure angle of attack they are easy easy examples and here i think today you learnt a lot because few more things were there uh, uh, when you will revise this object then uh, you may have doubt then that doubt will discuss in next class are you okay with this okay very good so you revise and ask your doubts so is it okay for today yeah okay then stop the class thank you dinesh Thank you bye bye